أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبده ورسوله الصادق الوعد الأمين محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful We do bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except the Almighty Allah we do bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's final and last messenger. May all the peace and the blessings of the Almighty Allah be upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his family members, his companions, men and women, and his followers, including us, until the Day of Judgment. Ameen. May Allah azza wa jal shower us with more knowledge and with more wisdom. Ameen. Ameen, Ya Rabbi. Today, my brothers and sisters, we welcome you to our regular weekly da'wah classes where we talk about lives of the prophets. Uh, welcome to Noor Ala Noor Academy, uh, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to benefit us with whatever we learn. Ameen, Ya Rab. Today's story is a story of Prophet Yunus, alayhi salam. Yunus ibn Matta, the son of Matta. Yunus alayhi salam is a very important prophet to learn from. His experience in life is quite unique. Something unique happened to him. And we need to know why that thing happened to him and what's the nature of that thing. So that we also learn from it. We learn from it. So who is Yunus ibn Matta first? Known in English as Jonah, son of Matta. Yunus alayhi salam is a prophet of Allah. The Quran mentions that in numerous verses and surahs. For instance, Allah Azza wa Jal has given a whole surah about him called Surah Yunus. There is a whole chapter by his name. So he must have done something very important and Allah is telling us learn from it this is why we tell you stories of the prophets we are not story storytellers in Islam we are not storytellers the Quran is not a book of stories but there are stories in the Quran meaning lessons that you and I can learn from inshallah so there is a whole surah called surah Yunus and Yunus alayhi salam has been mentioned in different verses and surahs as we said in Surah Al-Anbiya, in Surah Safat, Saad, in so many surahs. Allah has mentioned Yunus alayhi salam. For instance, Allah azza wa jal says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Falawla kanat qariyatun amanat fanafa'aha imanuha illa qawma Yunus. Here he is mentioned. Illa qawma Yunusa. لما آمنوا كشفنا عنهم عذاب الخزي في الحياة الدنيا ومتعناهم إلى حين. Also Allah mentions Yunus عليه السلام as the Nun. His name known also as the Nun. So he has a name, proper name, Yunus, and he has a title, the Nun. The Nun. I will explain later on what does it mean. وذن نون إذ ذهب مغاضبا فلما فظن أن لن نقدر عليه. فنادى في الظلمات أن لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين فاستجبنا له ونجيناه من الغم وكذلك ننجي المؤمنين اللهم نجينا من كل غم يا أرحم الراحمين Also he is known in the Quran as صاحب الحوت Jonah of the whale He is known also Yunus, Jonah ذنون uh, and also known as Jonah of the whale because something happened to him that deals with this uh, gigantic whale that we're going to talk about inshallah so he's known also in the quran in surat as-safat as wa alaykum as as jonah of the whale fasbir li hukmi rabbik wa la takun ka sahib al-hut idh nada wa huwa makdhum lawla an tadarakahu ni'matun min rabbih لنبذ بالعراء وهو مذموم فاجتباه ربه فجعله من الصالحين اللهم اجعلنا من الصالحين 
Allah Azza wa Jal also mentioned Yunus alayhi salam as Sahib al hut In Arabic, Sahib al hut for example, we say Sahib al dukan So and so, the one who has shop. So and so, the one who has a Mercedes. So something unique that the person is known in that society with. Huh? So he was known as Jonah of the whale, Sahib al hut al hut is is something big. We use it uh, today for uh, sardine. No. Type of sardine, small fish are called samak. Big fish is called whale, uh, called hut in Arabic. Such as whale or something huge that can swallow human being. So, I have recited few verses for you sisters and brothers so far. Just to introduce you to this great prophet of Allah who is a Muslim, prophet of Islam. All the prophets of Allah are Muslims. Remember this. All the prophets of Allah are Muslims. And they all taught one single thing, common thing. What is it? All the prophets of Allah have been given this mission. What is it? To teach people that there is only one God to be worshipped and to avoid taghut. Taghut is anything other than Allah. Anything you worship other than God is called taghut. Very important uh, term that we have forgotten. Taghut. So are you with Allah or with the taghut? So Yunus alayhi salam is a man of Allah azza wa who was teaching people tawheed. He was sent to the people of Nainawa. Nainawa, now, today, today, Long time ago, it used to be just a city. It's called Nainaveh in English. It is in northern Iraq, very near to today's Mosul. There is a city, major city in Iraq. I think the second biggest city after Baghdad is called Al-Mosul. Al-Mosul in the north. Near Al-Mosul, there was a village. And when we say village, we don't mean kampung, small thing, you know? A qarya. Al-Qarya in the Quran, it means civilization. So his people were over 100,000 people. They were over 100,000 people, men, women, children, and whatever. He has been teaching them about Islam. He was born amongst them. They knew his character. They knew his father, Matta. He's not uh, uh, an unknown pro uh, per person. But they refused to believe in him. They refused. So what he did, he got so mad at them one day. And he told them, I'm leaving you and wait after three days. You have three days to live. Allah will destroy you after three days. Thank you. Allah will destroy you after three, three days. He got so mad at them and he left. In those three days, something happened. We need to know a little bit about it. So he has left them for the punishment of Allah. But that was actually a mistake that he committed. Peace be upon him, alayhi salam. It was a mistake. Why? Because he left them without Allah's permission. He thought he has done enough and these people refused to believe. So he took the initiative to leave them before Allah tells them. Every prophet when Allah wanted to destroy the people of that prophet, after they refused to believe in him, such as, for example, Prophet Salih alayhi salam, Prophet Salih alayhi salam, Allah destroyed his people, Thamud. But until Allah tells him, leave. When Allah tells him, leave, take your family and leave. Then Allah destroys the people. Same thing was for Prophet Lut alayhi salam. The first homosexuals on earth who were completely destroyed. They were punished three times, not one time. And one punishment from Allah is enough to destroy. No, he destroyed them three times. Three types of punishments for the homosexuals. May Allah save me and you. Say Amin. Lut alayhi salam didn't leave his people until Allah ordered him to leave. And he said, take your daughters and leave. And do not look back. Your wife will be destroyed, O oh Lord. Because she is just like these people. So, 
Every prophet had to wait for Allah's command to leave, except Yunus alayhi salam. So he left without, he thought he has done his job. So he has to leave these people. That was the mistake. Mistake, not sin. Prophets do not sin. Al-Anbiya la yartakibun al-ma'asi. They don't sin like you and me, God forbid. But in their human judgments, they make mistakes. So please differentiate between khata' and khati'ah. The prophets don't sin, don't commit sins, don't lie, don't cheat, don't uh, steal, don't commit zina, don't commit shirk. Humans can. But in their human judgment, the prophets also make mistakes. I give you an example. I give you an example. Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam never committed a sin, khati'ah. But Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam, in his human judgments, to also prove to, for Allah to prove to us that these prophets are humans like you. And I allow them to make certain mistakes, being humans. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam was so busy one day talking to the leaders of Mecca, trying to convince them about Islam. Because if he can convince the leaders, the followers will follow Islam, alhamdulillah. So at that very moment, Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Maktoum, ibn Ummi Maktoum radiallahu anhu came. He is a blind companion. He came to try to ask about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, to ask Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam about certain Islamic you know, matters, especially tazkiyah, purification of the heart. So Rasulullah SAW got a little bit upset and frowned, like it is not the right time. Oh, Abdullah, you should not have come to this time, because I'm busy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the whole surah, the whole surah, you all know it, surah Abasa, telling him, never do that, oh Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, never turn your face from the believers. Something we do, by the way, when we are we are, uh, with non-Muslims, we don't like it when a Muslim come and I am, I'm, I'm, no, never feel and inter interrupted, never feel interrupted when a Muslim comes and you are with non-Muslims. Always Muslims take priority. You're talking to people, somebody wants you. Muslim, attend. Very important. We do the opposite, na'udhu billah. So, human mistakes like this, okay? The mistake of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam when he pushed the two fighters, one Israelite and one from the Egyptians. When he pushed both of them, this one fell on a stone, died. That's not murder, because there is no intent to kill. I tried to stop a fight, one died. So it's not a murder, contemplated murder and this and that. Things like this. So Yunus alayhi salam had to leave his people. He got fed up with his people and he punished them. Uh, he promised them divine punishment. He said, wait after three days, see what Allah will do to you. But Ibn Mas'ud and Imam Mujahid and Imam Qatada, this great, uh, mashallah, uh, sahaba and uh, tabi'een and uh, scholars of tafsir said that when he fled, when Sayyidina uh, Yunus alayhi salam left his people and fled them, fled from them, his people became sure of the punishment. Because they said, why did he leave us? If he's still with us, there is no punishment. They all learned from previous, from previous people. Hey. Hud alayhi salam left his people. Ha <laughs> ha, Ad gone. Salih alayhi salam left his people. Thamud gone. Lut alayhi salam left his people. The people of Lut gone. So they realized, oh, if he left, it means it's coming. So they panicked. What they did, they did the right thing. They repented to Allah. All of them repented. They repented. Sincerely, and all of them were crying, men and women and children. They were crying, crying, oh Allah, don't punish us. Oh, sorry, we are sorry, we are sorry, we are sorry. Allah, what did he do? The most merciful. He decided the punishment. That doesn't mean Yunus was not right, but he should not have left them before Allah says. Ha. 
the punishment was done. Then Allah Azza wa Jal, as the punishment was on the way, Allah Azza wa Jal recalled his punishment. Because people repented. My brothers and sisters, we learn something from this. That you might have been doomed as long as you repent. Khalas, alhamdulillah, you're okay. The punishment is on the way and you are repenting. Allah Azza wa Jal will recall his punishment. So never give up on Allah's tawbah and on Allah's hope. Hope in him. Never give up. So these people, they realized within those three days they repented. They didn't delay the tawbah. So never delay your repentance. I tell you a true story of a sister who never delayed her salat. In her life, she never delayed salat. When Adhan comes, she leaves everything and she goes pray. Everything and she goes pray. This lady was married. Her husband calls her half an hour before Dhuhr. Salamu alaikum wa alaikum as -salam. I am bringing a guest. Please prepare something for us. She said, most welcome, you and your guest. She was preparing whatever she could for them to eat for lunch. And then Adhan came, Salat al dhuhr right? She was preparing. She put something on the stove. She was preparing Salat. And then she was preparing what we call, you know, there is something the Arabs uh, in the Middle East do, which is rice inside grape leaves. Have you tried that? Okay. If you didn't try, look for it. It's good, something good. It's, it's like salad. And she had only three left. Only three grape leaves left. She prepared, but when she heard the adhan, she stopped. She was cooking. The food was ready, everything, alhamdulillah, the table. She went to pray. The husband comes. He opens the door. He goes in, he looks for his wife. He finds the food, he looks for his wife. He finds her dead in the sujood, dhuhr time. If she delayed, just few minutes to make those three, she would have died in the kitchen, not in the sujood. MashaAllah. She went to Allah in sujood. What an honorable death. So that's why you should never delay what you're supposed to, to do for Allah. Because Allah is your priority. So these people also were blessed by Allah's rahmah because they did not delay the tawbah. Otherwise, after three days, that's it. So they realized their mistake. So as soon as you sin, my brothers and sisters, never, never delay tawbah. Ask Allah forgiveness, pray to rak'ahs. Ya Rab, forgive me, I won't do it again. And try your level best not to return to the same sin. So these are some of the lessons we learn from the story of Yunus alayhi salam. So Allah Azza wa Jal accepted their repentance. He accepted the tawbah of these people. And Something is going to happen. Now Allah tests his prophet. Who are the most tested people on earth? The prophets. Then who? The ulama. Then who? Those, those who are closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. That's why you see so many alim go through many, 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 many hardships in their lives. Jails, torture, maybe even killing. And, and they are good people. They are alim. And they do nothing wrong. They just teach people the right thing. But to the dictators and to the bad people, these are threats. Must remove them. So, here is Prophet of Allah, Yunus alayhi salam, son of Matta, going into one of the most difficult trials in life. Remember we saw Yusuf alayhi salam a couple of weeks ago? Then we saw after Yusuf, who did we see? Let me see if you, are, if you still remember. Huh? Prophet who? Ayyub alayhi salam, sabr. All of his body was eaten by worms, except the head. He had skin rashes that the skin, you can see the bone. You start seeing the bone. Allahu Akbar. That's a prophet of Allah went through that. So how about you and me if we go through, through some health problems? With all the coverage we have, with all, mashallah, the... 
And it was a test to his good wife as well. His wife, alhamdulillah, passed the test with him. As a good wife, should always stand by her husband, especially when he is tested in his health or wealth or whatever. He also lost all of his money. He was very rich. He lost all of his children. Then he was patient for 18 years. 18 years. Allahu Akbar. Imagine 18 years you see. For 18 years you see your bone. Not your skin. You see your bone. And you busu. You smell so bad. Yes. That's what happened. Smell so bad. Who can come near to you? He never complained to Allah and said, Why you do this to me, O Allah? Why you do this? Like we do. Why, why me? Knapasaya. Knapasaya because Allah loves you. How about that? Oh, I don't want this love. I want love of celebrity and money showering on me. And you know, every boy looking at me. If I am a girl and every girl say hi for me. Oh, you. you Allah can test you like that, but you may fail and go to hell. How about that? Mm. Careful, guys. Huh? All right. Now, Yunus alayhi salam also had his share of trials and tribulations, tests. So what did Allah do to him? He boarded a ship. He went to a city where there is a port. And he was so fed up with his people, he doesn't want even to be near. You know, between Nainawa, which is today, by the way, Nainawa is a whole muhafada. Is like a governorship. But long time ago when Yunus alayhi salam was alive, it was a city close to Mosul, as we said. He went somewhere, Allah know, we don't know where exactly he boarded, but in a port city. It could be Al-Basra, it could be Allah knows. Anyways, it's in Iraq. And he boarded a ship. He was so mad at his people. That's it. I cannot live with these people. Careful. Sometimes Allah tests you with a brother or a sister or a husband or a wife. Say, I don't, I'm fed up. Yalla, yalla, khalas. I leave. And then more tests are on your way. He, alayhi salam, left on the way when the ship got into the middle of the sea, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a huge asifa. Tempest, a huge storm. What it did to them, it was so huge that they had to throw everything that they might not need, including humans. So they throw what we call lots. They did the draw, who may be thrown. Since he was a pious person, the first draw was him, it was him. They didn't want to throw him because he's pious. They said, let's try one more time. So they, they respected him for being a good-looking scholar. Like we see a scholar, Alim, you say, come on. Second time, it was him again. Allahu Akbar. Then they said, sorry, we are dying. You have to go. They threw him. As he fell into the water, Allah, with his mercy, sent a whale. If he stayed in the water, he would have died because he will drown. For how long you can? Okay, you know how to swim, but you are in the middle of the ocean. How long? You know how to swim, but you'll be tired. That's it. You're exhausted. You die. Out of just exhaustion or hypothermia or anything. So Allah Azza wa Jal sent a whale. That whale swallowed him. He thought he died. He didn't see the whale. When he was struggling to survive, Allah Azza wa Jal sent the whale that swallowed him. He thought he died. And then what he did, he pinched himself. He started pinching. It's a good way to know if you are alive or not. Okay? Do like this. I'm okay? Pinch yourself. So he started feeling the pinch. So he realized that he is alive. What did he do at that time? Look at this, subhanAllah. The amazing thing about the story of Yunus alayhi salam in the stomach of the whale is that Allah azza wa did not mention zulma, one. 
he mentioned dhulumat. Fanada fi dhulumat. The Quran said he was in multiple darkness, not in on one darkness. Plural. So, what does that mean? Some ulama of tafsir said he was in the stomach of a fish swallowed by another fish. Many times when we used to go fishing, we catch a fish, we open, we find another fish inside already. Double bonus. Buy one, get one free. So you eat them both, no problem. Still alive. One big fish, ate one small fish. Subhanallah, you open up, you find two fish. So that's one tafsir. The other tafsir, it was so dark inside the stomach of a whale, al hut because it's mentioned only one. Amazingly, by the way, the word hut in Arabic means singular and plural. So it could be plural as well. Swallowed, welcome. Swallowed by uh, a fish swallowed by another fish. A whale swallowed by a bigger whale. Do you think we know everything about the oceans? We haven't seen maybe even 5 to 10% of Allah's treasures of the, of the oceans. We haven't seen yet. With all the technology we may have, we haven't seen yet anything. Because Allah said, وَيَخْلُقُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And He creates what you have no idea about. You know, sometimes they talk about monster things. True, there are. But you have to go deep to see. So, there was the, the darkness of the whale's stomach. And there was another whale swallowing the other whale. And the darkness of the depth of the sea. That's why the Quran said, Zulumat, plural. Zulumat. So he called in the multiple darkness. La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al This is a very important dua that all of us should say it every day, every day. Not only when you sin, even when you don't sin. Even when you do good, you should always say, La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al This dua is the greatest dua you will see said by any prophet. We will see what Rasulullah Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him commented on that shortly inshallah. So this is one tafsir. Uh, darkness of a stomach inside another whale inside the darkness of the ocean. It is said when he was swallowed, Allah ordered the whale not to break his bones and not to scratch his his skin. Meaning, you swallow it, but you don't eat it. It's not your provision. Allah said to the whale, Laysa rizquk. This is not your risky. You know, sometimes something comes to you, but you don't eat it. It comes to you, like this water, it may come to me. But subhanAllah, I will not take it. Somebody else will take it. It was your plate. The coffee came to you, spill. It's not yours. That type of is not yours, subhanAllah. So the risk comes from Allah, my sisters and brothers. So Allah Azza wa Jal ordered that whale not to swallow him, just to preserve him. And order that whale to go down, to go deep, which is submarine. The idea of submarine is already in the Quran. But subhanAllah, we wait for Americans and Russians and British to find it. And we say, oh, it's in the Quran. If it's in the Quran, why you didn't discover it? Allah, long time ago, told us, you can use something like a whale for survival under the sea. You see what I mean? So the Muslims are supposed to be the first submariners, if we can say that. Because the story is given to us. Yunus is a Muslim. He's a prophet of Allah. So hopefully some of you who are studying engineering gain the knowledge from this story and design for us a new submarine that, n that no one can detect. Inshallah. Say Ameen. So he went down with Yus Yunus alayhi salam inside his belly until Yunus alayhi salam heard something. He heard something. He said, oh Allah, what is it that I hear? He said, these are the tasbih of the pebbles on the depth of the seas and 
the tasbih of the fish inside the sea. Then he remembered, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al -zalimin. When Yunus alayhi salam in that fear of death, he realized that he didn't die, he heard something, he remembered. So when you hear adhan, do you remember istighfar? When do you hear a dars like this? Do you remember istighfar? When you hear your father and mother telling you not to do something, do you say, Ya inshallah, I'm sure my parents love me so much that they are preventing me from something? For sure there is harm in it. They're asking me inshallah to do something? For sure there is good in it. Even when I don't like it. Such as helping mommy at work, you know, cleaning, cooking, texting, Facebooking, better, yeah? So, what we learn from this story here again, that he, when he heard something, he said, Ya Allah, what is it? Ibn Kathir and so many great Mufassirin said, it was the, the, the tasbih of the pebbles and the tasbih of the fish. He said, what is this sound that I hear? He said, that's the sound of tasbih. So he remembered, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al But something unique about Yunus alayhi salam, what is it? He did not do tasbih only during hardship. He knew Allah before. He was a very good musabbih. He was a man of tasbih. Sisters and brothers, by Allah tell me, is it difficult to make dhikr? Dhikr is the easiest ibadah. It doesn't require wudu. It doesn't require uh, you to be in hijab or me to be in a dress like this. You don't have to face the qibla. You don't have to do certain rituals like salat. Salat, you have to get up to do ruku, to do sujood, fasting. You have to do certain things between. It doesn't even require time. On your free time. That's why Imam Shafi'i, may Allah have mercy on him, says, on the day of judgment, when Allah resurrects us, the people of dhikr will see so much of the reward of Allah that those who are not making dhikr feel so jealous. Because it does not require from you the... The, 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 the duties, like the duties of Salat, or Siyam, or Jihad, or Zakat, or Hajj. You just praise Allah with your tongue. So Yunus alayhi salam used to make dhikr before. Before Allah tested him, he was always from people of Tasbih. So Allah Azza wa Jal knew him during hardship. That's why I keep always telling you, know Allah at ease, he will know you during difficulties. It's true. If you know Allah now, for example, there is no problem, alhamdulillah, AC. We are even complaining that the AC is cold. You know what I mean? He will know you during heart uh, heat. Ah, panas, 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 real panas. You know Allah when you have money by giving to the poor. Allah will know you when you are poor, He will give you. You know Allah when you are healthy, you do good things with your body. You help others, you visit people, you do good. He will know you when you are weak. Here is Yunus السلام, in dire need. He doesn't even know where he is. Ya Allah, he doesn't even know where. He, he is even underwater. But Allah is going to save him because he was from them. The Quran said, had it not been for Yunus السلام, to be among those who used to do tasbih before before he was tested, he would have remained there in the, in the whale's stomach until the Day of Judgment. There are two opinions about the tafsir of this verse. Is there such a thing that can live until the Day of Judgment? Or is it a metaphor, majaz in Arabic, that I tell you, look, if you do this, I'm, I'm going to be angry at you till the Day of Judgment. I'm going to die, I might not, you know. So, the ulama are different about the tafsir of this verse. Is it literally that he was going to remain there until the day of judgment? Meaning this whale will live for long, maybe we look for that Moby Dick, you know, that whatever. We grew up with stories of Moby Dick, tale of two story, uh, cities and whatever. Huh? Or is it like they would have, he would have died and that's it. For us, 
Both are possible. Why? Because I'm talking about Allah. This opinion is possible and this opinion is possible. Allah can create something and keep it alive until the day of judgment. Like shaitan. Like malaika. When Allah create them, they don't die until the day of judgment. Huh? Allah, this is Allah, God, can do anything He wants. You and I cannot. Alright? So, this brings us to the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu in which he said, Ya Ghulam, to Abdullah bin Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, to his cousin. He one day rode with him. Rasulullah sallallahu before he died, three years before he died, when he was 60, he started giving more time to the youth. Something we need to do. Huh? When you see yourself, brother and sister, in your late 50s, you're supposed to spend more time with the youth. Why? Giving them from your experience. You're about to bye-bye. So what to do? You give your experience to... Don't be hanging with uh, old people only. Give some experience to the children. Whatever experience Allah has given you. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to take young kids like Abdullah bin Abbas who used to ride behind him. He puts him behind and he said, what an honor. I was touching the belly of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hide like, like riding. And they are riding. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling him, oh Abdullah, I'm going to teach you a few things. Never forget them. What are they, O oh Messenger of Allah? He said, Ya Ghulam, inni mu'allimuka kalimat. Ihfadhi Allah yahfadhk. احفظ الله تجده تجاهك تعرف على الله في الرخاء يعرفك في الشدة The hadith says, Oh boy, I am teaching you some words. So the boy now is paying attention. I hope boys and girls are, are listening. I'm teaching you uh, some words. Guard the duties of Allah. Allah will guard you. Pray on time. Fast your Ramadan. Make up your fast sisters now. Do not delay. Shawwal you have to finish with the few days of your periods and this and that. Then Allah Azza wa will what? He will guard you because you are guarding his duties. He will guard you. He will look after you. Don't worry about it. Number two, احفظ الله تجده تجاهك. Guard Allah, guard the duties of God, meaning observe Allah's duties on you. You will find him in front of you. What does it mean find him? Allah, will, wherever you go, Allah will be with you. Mean he will protect you. He will guide you. He will be your Leader, so, and Allah will take you always to good. And the third one, he said, Know Allah in the time of your comfort. Allah will know you in the time of your hardship. This is exactly what is related to the story of Yunus. Because he knew Allah during ease, during hardship, Allah knew him, supported him, saved him. So, I hope all my youth brothers and sisters will insha'Allah uh, use this hadith and never forget it. Guard the duties of Allah, Allah will guard you. Guard the duties of Allah, you will find him in front of you. Know Allah during ease, Allah will know you during difficulties. It is said that when he was, this is uh, re uh, re related to us by Ibn Jarir at tabari in his tafsir, that Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam said, when Allah wanted to keep Yunus in the belly of the fish, he revealed to the fish, do not break his bones. Take him inside and do not scratch his skin. Because salt, salt, oh, if I put some salt on you and put you under the sun, ah, sunburn, worse, torture, just the sun. I don't even, how about if I scratch you with salt? Scratch you like a cat and put salt. Whoa. Musiba. Huh. So, the fish was ordered not to scratch the skin nor to break the bones because uh, huge. Just swallow. Huh. The hadith says, I mean, the, Ibn Jarir says that Sayyidina Yunus alayhi salam heard something. And when he heard that thing, he said, oh Allah, what is this? Allah revealed to him, it is the tasbih of the fish and the pebbles. Even pebbles, they have their tasbih. 
stones make tasbih and some Muslims don't. Na'udhu Billah. Na'udhu Billah. May Allah guide us to make tasbih, a lot of tasbih. Why there is surah? Sabbi hisma rabbika al-a'la. Why there is surah? Sabbaha lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard. Why there is surah? Yusabbihu lillahi ma fi ما في السماوات وما في الأرض. الله عز وجل يستنجي تسبيح تسبيح تسبيح. It's good. سبحان الله سبحان الله. You see something nice? سبحان الله. Somebody calls you and you miss him or سبحان الله. I thought you forgot about me. So you make ذكر even in ما شاء الله our daily interaction. أستغفر الله. Somebody makes you angry. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. ما شاء الله. Eh, subhanallah, this is how a Muslim speaks, not alama. <laughs> Why alama? What do you want to say? Oh, oh, gosh. Not even God anymore. Sar we gulu gosh, mush God. Some Muslims, Jesus. What? You call on Jesus? <laughs> Are you a Christian? <laughs> Some Muslims, they, they try to be like Westerners. And uh, when they realize, they say, G, instead of, you know, they realize, oh, G. <laughs> this, I tell them, I tell them this, you finish it. <laughs> yeah, I caught you. May Allah forgive us. Okay, so instead of I, Alama, wow, uh, great, we say, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, mashaAllah, astaghfirullah. Alhamdulillah, you are making dhikr, you are gaining you are making your point and you're gaining hasanat. Subhanallah. Now, Ibn Abi Hatim in his tafsir said that Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam said, when Yunus alayhi salam realized that he should say these words in the belly of the fish, in the belly of the huge fish, he said, oh Allah, there is no God worthy of worship but you, you are glorified. La ilaha illa ant. First, Tawheed. There is no God but you, Allah. There is no other God but you. Very important. Keep that. No matter what people do to you, you better die saying La ilaha illa Allah. People are torturing you, God forbid. They want to shoot you, they want to kill you. Keep saying, because you, when you die, you say La ilaha illa you go to Jannah straight. But you say, okay, I will say what they want me to say, and I stop. Still, they will kill you. How about that? Ah, but Sheikh, when we are forced, how many times you die? How many times you're gonna die? Only one time. So don't be afraid. There is no second death or third death. Huh. Then he said, "You are glorified, Subhanak. Inni kuntu min al I admit I was wrong. I was wrong. So he admitted he was wrong. How many of us admit? Mm -hmm. I was not wrong. Everybody's wrong except me. So he admitted to Allah that he was wrong. He was wrong by leaving his people. What did Allah do? Right away, فَكَشَفْنَا Right away, the fa. As a result of what he said, therefore, we saved him from hardship. So you admit, when your parents catch you doing something that you're not supposed to do, let's say. They told you not to do something. And don't say, uh, don't justify, just say, I'm sorry. Then, alhamdulillah. Maybe slap or two, but you know, quickly. Or maybe mommy said, don't do it again. Daddy, may Allah have mercy on you. I don't know how your daddies deal with you, but when I used to make a mistake, especially if I repeat, my daddy, may Allah reward him. I see all the stars during noon. I start seeing stars around. That's a good way of teaching, I believe, because he told me one time, don't do it, and I did it. So next time, I, won't, I don't want to see stars, I do what my father tells me to do, that's it. And I'm still alive, alhamdulillah, and teaching. I do believe in rotan, but not in torture. There's a big difference between rotan and torture. Your son is 10 years old and you're telling him go pray. And he doesn't want to do. What do you do? Inshallah, I will ask 
Rasulullah SAW said, hit them. At 10 years old, if they don't pray, you start spanking. So that you say, they rather be spanked than go to hell. How about that? Which one is worse? Which one is worse? Answer. I bring a big piece of iron which is hot. So hot that it's white now. It's not even red. And I'm going to put it on you. Versus? You tell me, okay, okay. Rotan, rotan, better. Ah, how about throwing someone in hellfire forever? Tariq Salat, people you don't pray. Don't even talk to them. Don't even speak to them. Why? You don't pray. When you pray, you Muslim, you don't pray. When you pray, you talk to me. How about that? But we don't do that. Ah, yeah, yeah. How, how far are Muslims from Islam? May Allah forgive us. Back to the story of Yunus alayhi salam. That was short commercial. Now back to the movie called Yunus alayhi salam. Yunus alayhi salam, Allah azza wa this is how he saved him. He ordered the fish to go and, sw and spit him or vomit him and throw him into a barren land. So the beach, it was a beach, sandy beach. Nothing grew there. Don't ask me where, Allah knows. If I knew, I would have told you. Is it in Iraq? Is it in Egypt? Is it in uh, California? You know or you don't know, well, that's not the point. The point is, Allah said to the fish, vomit him, meaning Allah saved him. Took him, swallowed him, he fell. When he fell, it was, it said, he was so weak, he didn't even have the energy of a baby. In another tafsir, it said that he was so weak that he couldn't get up. He could not get up. And his skin had rashes because of the salt. Although, alhamdulillah, he was not scratched. So what did Allah do to him? He grew up, Allah grew up, ordered a tree out of what we call marrow. Do you know marrow plant? Marrow plant? Like a cucumber, cucumber, but it is marrow. Uh, it's also called in English, um, like zucchini. You know, like zucchini. There is, subhanallah, Shajaratan min yaqteen. Allah Azza wa Jalla said, it's a shajara, it's a tree. But it is not a tree, it's a plant that grew up to protect his body. It gives a lot of shade and the, the skin of it is very smooth, meaning the, the flesh, I mean the, the, the leaf, when it touches your skin, it's very, very soft. So it will not hurt him, he's already hurt. And he can eat from the tree, from the plant itself. He can even, you can, by the way, you can eat the skin, you can eat the inside, and you can eat the seed. Everything is good about this tree. And some ulama said, since Allah has mentioned this, this is one of the best plants you can ever eat in your life. So eat from it. Um, it is called in English, uh, there is another name. You know marrow, marrow plant? Okay, you go to Sheikh Google and put marrow plant, marrow plant, M-A-R-R-O-W, marrow plant, and you see it. Oh, this is the one. Eat from it. Make it part of your, mashallah, diet. Make it part of your diet. It's very healthy. It has a lot of benefits, some of which are these. It's called gourd, G-O-U-R-D, gourd. Gourd plant or marrow plant. I've seen it here in Malaysia, alhamdulillah, I mean, you, you grow it, it grows here. Uh, it is said that because it leaves, uh, its leaves are very soft, they are plentiful and they provide shade. So they are big, they are soft, they are big, and meaning that he can hide under the shade because the sun, the sun of the beach will destroy him also. And flies do not come to it. Flies don't come to that. Imagine I am about to die and there are hundreds of thousands of flies over my body. 
If I don't die out of the heat, I die from the flies. So this plant, Shajaratan Min Yaqteen, is very beneficial to any one of us, including in your backyards if you have backyard, try to look for it and plant it. Also, its fruits could be consumed from the beginning of sprouting until the ripe. Meaning, when they are still flowers, you can eat them, the fruits. And you can eat them when they become all f complete fruits and they are ripe. Also, you can cook them and you can eat them and cooked. You know, there are things you can't cook. You cook durian, maybe. I don't know, I didn't see yet, uh, but, but you can eat durian f like banana. Can we eat banana fried and non-fried? Maybe. This is also, you can eat it fried, you can eat it cooked, you can eat, eat it not cooked. So Alhamdulillah, it's a good fruit. Um, can you eat potato without cooking potato? Some people, but majority of people, no, this is something that you can cook and eat it also and cooked. In the, in, in return, Allah also sent him uh, wild goats. Wild goats, they do what? They come eat from the leaves and he drinks from their milk. Straight from the milk. The goats come, they start eating, he catch them and he start, that gives him some energy. Yes, so this is the miracle of Sidna Yunus alayhi salam. The whale and the shajarat al yaqteen and also goats. Al-Ma'iz, goats, they come, they eat from the history, he drinks from their milk, so they exchange. And straight from the factory, mashallah, very fresh. <laughs> not processed, not from New Zealand or Australia. Okay? So, I end by saying, hadith of Sayyidina Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, may Allah be pleased with him. It is narrated that Sayyidina Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas one day passed by Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan. These are Sahaba. May Allah be pleased with them. عشر مبشرين بالجنة. By the way, do you know how old was Sayyidina Sa'd when he, huh, when he went to, to open the land of uh, China? When he became Muslim and he was the first one who has thrown an arrow in Islam. Shooting, who has, he has done shooting for Allah's sake. He was just 17 years old. The biggest lie we lie to ourselves in when we say teenagers. I am inviting any one of us from today not to use the word teenager. In Islam we don't have, it's the West that put those terminologies in our mind to say they are teenagers. If you look at the Sahaba, 13 and up they were men, they considered them like men and women. And he gives them responsibilities. We say teenagers. Poor teenagers. 17 years old. And Rasulullah Sassim said, This is my uncle. Show me your ankles. Maternal uncle from his mother's side. He was so proud of him that the Prophet Sassim said, This is my maternal uncle. My uncle from my mother's side. Show me your mater maternal uncles. Hada khali fa aruni akhwalakum. Young kid. 17 years old. One day I will give lecture just about youth in Islam. 13 years old, 17, 16, doing great things. Today because we, we accept that no, 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 until they become 25 and 30. That's why our youth don't do nothing. They just watch TV and play games with their cell phones. May Allah forgive us and them. But go just see Jewish kids what they do. They learn how to fly fly an F-16, how to shoot every Palestinian. Ah, may Allah forgive us. Okay, back. Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas, may Allah be pleased with him, passed by Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu in the time of Sayyidina Umar, in, during the Caliphate of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an. Sayyidina Sa'ad bin, uh, bin Abi Waqqas radiallahu an, passed by Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu an, who was inside the masjid making dhikr. He told him, Assalamu Alaikum. 
Sayyidina Uthman looked at him and continued. He didn't say, Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah. Hey, this is very serious. If this happens to you, you better find out why. So Sayyidina Sa'd bin Abi Waqqas felt like, what's wrong with Sayyidina Uthman? I told him, Assalamu alaykum. And Allah said, answer back. So I'm worried for my brother. Why he didn't answer me? Because he did not obey Allah's command. He went to the Caliph. Radiallahu anhu Sayyidina Umar he said to him, What's wrong with what's wrong, O oh, Amir al Mu'mineen? So Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab told him, What why you say this? What happened? He said, I told my brother Uthman, Assalamu alaikum, he didn't reply. So Sayyidina Umar, you know, radiallahu anhu, he called Uthman. So Sayyidina Uthman came and he told him, Uthman, your brother Sa'd said, Assalamu alaikum, why he didn't re reply? He said, You did? He said, Yes. I told you salam and you looked at me. He said, by Allah, I was making dhikr of Allah. I was so into the dhikr with Allah that I didn't pay attention to it. It's true. You passed by, but I didn't hear you. What were you saying? La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al-zalimi. He was making the dhikr of Sayyidina Yunus alayhi salam. I heard Rasulullah sallallahu saying good important things about this. That's why I am sorry. I didn't, I was with Allah making dhikr. Meaning, we cannot just say, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al uh, just with tongue. You have to be in, deep with it. Like Uthman radiallahu anhu. But look at the good thing. When Sayyidina Sa'd didn't hear his brother saying salam, where did he complain to? To the authority. He didn't go backbiting. Facebooking, tweeting, hey CNN, I told, there is a hypocrite in the masjid, I told him, Salam alaikum. That's what we do. Instead of going to the brother and say, Brother, come, I told you, Salam alaikum, what's wrong? Did I offend you? You didn't say Salam? I said, Sorry, brother, Allah, I, I have problems, I am this, my wife is sick. Then you, subhanAllah, you, you feel sorry for the brother. Give him the benefit of the doubt. But Sayyidina Sa'd, went to the real authority. Please, there is a problem. Maybe I wronged my brother, please find out what. So Sayyidina, MashaAllah, Umar radiallahu killed the issue right away. That's what you need to do, face people next time. Do not hide. When people do something wrong to you, face them. Don't go speak bad about them. That's not good. Now Sayyidina Sa'd didn't speak bad. He went to the authority. And he said, maybe I did wrong him. That's why he didn't answer me. So he was accusing himself, not his brother Uthman. Last but not least, Rasulullah said about the da'wah of Sayyidina Yunus. He said, Naam, da'wah to the noon. Is huwa fi batni al-hut. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimin. Fa innahu lam yad'u biha muslimun rabbahu fi shay'in qattu. Illa astajaba lah. Rasulullah said, yes. That call was the call of Jonah inside the fish. There is no God worthy of worship but you, O Allah. Glory be to you. I was indeed wrong. No Muslim, no Muslim, including you and me, no Muslim will make any supplication with this call about anything, but Allah will accept from him. Before you ask Allah anything, for example, you want to pass an exam, you want to marry someone, you want to do, say, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al then ask what you want. Allah will give it to you. So now you know there is one way of having your dua answered by using this. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al Oh Allah, have mercy on me, on my parents, give me Jannah, give me this, give me. Then He will give it to you. Because He did to Yunus. Alayhi salam. Huh? Now, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَإِنَّ يُونُسَ لَمِنَ الْمُرْسَنِينَ Indeed, Yunus is one of the messengers. But no one can compare himself to Yunus. No one. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said, Do not compare yourself to Jonah. He said, Nobody should claim that he is better than Jonah. Do not say, I am better than Jonah. نعوذ بالله. Alhamdulillah, no Muslim will do that. Inshallah. But someone may say, I'm better than Jonah. I never gave up. You see, you see where the mistake is? 
Don't do that. Don't say, I will never give up. My motto in life is, die hard. Die hard or die soft. Who cares? You know what I mean? You may say that without knowing that you are falling into some kind of sin. Because you are comparing yourself to Yunus. Let alone saying, I'm better than Yunus. In another hadith, Rasulullah also said, لا ينبغي لأحد أن يقول أنا خير من يونس بن متى. It is not proper for anyone to say I'm better than Jonah the son of متى. Um, one person narrated by Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, that a Muslim slapped the face of a Jew. He hit him so hard in Medina. What was the reason? The Jew said, by he who has chosen Moses above all the worlds. He was swearing that Moses is the best. So this Muslim hit him so hard. How can you say he's the best? When Rasulullah said, you should never compare anyone to Yunus and the Prophet. You know what I mean? You put Musa better than Prophet Muhammad so this Muslim was waiting for him. He knew that they will bomb Gaza, so he said, I will give it to you 1400 years before you do that. Yes, when Muslims were Muslims. I don't just come and slap you, but you watch what you say. Because I'm a Muslim, you're offending me now. Rasulullah himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he say? لا تفضلوني على الأنبياء ولا على يونس بن متى سبحان الله. Although he's the best, although the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the best of all prophets, but what he said, do not prefer me over other prophets, nor over Jonah. He mentioned Yunus. This hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Al Bukhari and Muslim, Bukhari and Muslim mentioned this hadith. This shows what he was the best. No, no doubt that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the best, but this shows the humility of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, like, like, you know someone is the best student in class, but he say, I'm, I'm just like anyone. No, no, you are genius. You work very hard. You know what I mean? But he said, please, please, I'm, I'm like anyone. He's trying to be humble, but in reality, he's the best. So Rasulullah teaching Sahaba to be humble. He said, please do not uh, prefer me over other prophets. This, wa billahi tawfiq wal hidayah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.